Your power is within me. No doubt. 
we got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. I believe I say that one more time, knowing that your labor is not in vain. It may seem like things ain't going your way, but your labor is not in vain. If you learn how to be steadfast on always abounding in the work of the Lord. See, I, I thought I had some Bible readers in here. You got to learn how to be steadfast and then you got to be my, my, my. Come on, we getting ready to pray. We lift up many names this morning. But we know that God is still able. I said he's still able. How do you know he's able, Johnson? Because I done tried him too many times. Anybody got a yes, Lord? I mean, do you really got a completely yes? Come on, choir. Go ahead and type those names. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Depths of my soul. Everybody get feel completely. My soul, my soul, say yes from the top again. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. My soul. One more time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From, from the of my heart. Depths of my soul. Depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Complete. My soul. Depths of my soul. I love you. I completely do. My soul. Say yes. One more time. I love you. Come on. From the bottom of my heart, depths of my soul, I love you. I really do. My soul. So yeah. I need you to do me a favor and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
I can't hear y'all. Yes, Lord. From the bottom, from the bottom of my heart, depths of my soul. Completely, yes. Completely, My soul is Come on, type those names one more time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom. Depths of my soul. Of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely. Completely. My soul. My soul. And God, our soul says yes to you. Yes. Because you woke us up this morning. Yes, because you watched over us all night long. Keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. For this we say we love you. We really do love you. Because nobody but a God like you can look beyond our faults and still meet our needs. Nobody but a God like you can take a sinner like us, wash us and purge us, and make us whole. Nobody but a God like you can bring us sunshine on a cloudy day. Nobody but a God like you can give us peace in the midst of confusion. Nobody but a God like you can give us joy when we ought to be sad. And since you've done all that, all we can do is say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts to the depths of our soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, for waking us up, keeping us in perfect peace with our mind stayed on you. Yes, Lord, for allowing us to be able to dress ourselves. Yes, Lord, for allowing us to sit at a table of thanksgiving, having an appetite to eat. Yes, Lord, for protecting us over the dangerous highways and byways. Yes, Lord, for helping us get to the house of worship one more time. Yes, Lord, to find our brothers and our sisters still on the land of the living and not in the land of the dying. Yes, Lord, we love you, God. We magnify you, God. You promise, God, never to leave us nor forsake us. God, we got sickness in the land, but I still believe your word. That says with my stripes you are healed. I still believe your word. That will no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I still believe your word. That you are my light and my salvation. I still believe your word. So I'm standing on your word. Standing on your word. That you will never leave us nor forsake us. I'm standing on your word. That God, you got us in the hollow of your hand. I'm standing on your word. Make it phone call at the phone call asking for prayer, but I know what prayer can do. So this morning, we put Mount Hermon in your hands. We put the mount in your hands. God, you know everything about us. For 114 years, we've been here serving you. And so God, we're granting action for another 114 years. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus. So God bless these singers that's going to sing Zion songs. Bless them, God, that they may have an audience with you alone. Bless them, God, that while they're singing, they feel your anointing in this place. We thank you for these musicians. Bless them as only you can. Continue to bind them closer together. That when they sit down at the instrument, they sit and have an audience with you and you alone. Thank you for the deacons and the deaconess. Strengthen them as only you can. Bless their families. The missions and the matrons. 
Bless them as only you can. The doorkeepers and the temperature check, bless them as only you can. The media and the sound team, bless them as only you can. The congregation as a whole, bless them as only you can. God, I don't have to send you nowhere because you're everywhere at the same time. You're omnipresent. You're omniscient. So you already know before I even ask you what I'm getting ready to ask you to do. But God, would you just stop by the hospital? Bless our members in the hospital. God, you've been with the Jackson family for a mighty long time. And they need you like never before. Bless the sons and the daughters. Bless the husband and the grandchildren. Whatever your will is, we're willing to accept. But we know that if we ask it in your name, you still get the glory. You still get the honor. You still will get the praise. God says the Matty gifts. You already know. So God, we know that you're able to do just what you said you would do. Brother Roger Glow, we know you got power to do what you said you would do. So God, be God. Heal right now. Deacon Bobby Sniggers, you already know. Touch his body as only you can. Sister Mary and Marshall, you already know that you got the power to do what you want to do. Sister Barbara Rowe, we already know that you're moving right now. Brother and Sister Flannoy, we already know what you're going to do. Sister, Sister Chapel, a living testimony. So we already know that you got the power. Sister Essie Mae Harris, we already know what you've done. You already got the victory. God always saying is move when you get ready. And when you move, we'll be ready to accept. Because you got power to move up and down Magnolia. You got power to move up and down Sherman. You got power to move up and down 23rd Street, 22nd Street, 18th Street, 19th Street, 16th Street, 15th Street. You got power to move up and down these streets. Just give us the ability to accept how you move. Would you do it for us? God, Pastor Jackson, bless his body right now. Bless his wife. Bless the Truett family. The Bandy family. The Halls and the Hayes family. The Welch and the Wilson and the Martin family. Would you bless the Brooks family? The Marshall family. The Jones and the Tyner family. Would you bless this thy servant? In the Mount Herman Baptist Church. Would you bless the Shepherd's Care Ministry? The Woody, the Marshall, the Rudd, the Preston and the Glenn family. The Holloway, the Cameron, the Fears, and the Jackson family. The Flintoy, the Wilson, the Landers, the Scott, the Barbers family. The Brooks family, the Jennings, the Hargis family. Would you bless Wilson, Flintoy, Barbara, Gibson, Carter, Fisher, Dozer, Lander, Parler, Hutchinson, Jackson, Cooper, Thomas, Hughley, and Ray family. Would you bless this your church as only you can? Would you bless young Princeton Davis? Would you bless the Thomas family? The Darty, the Lancaster, the Loach family, the Belch, the, the Lewis, the Sanders, the Rooks, the Williams family, Sister Phyllis, Phyllis Morgan and family, Sister Evelyn McCullough and family, the Barrows family, the Nettie's, Sister Nettie, Sister Willis, Byron Bledsoe. Sister Essie May, here's the Craig, the Foster, the Williams, the Courtman, the McGault family, the Sweeney, the Moore, the Pollard, the Landers, the Rudd, the Zachary family. 
the Bauer family, the Lowe, the Adams, the Gibson, the Howe, the Miles, the Avery, Williams, Bookers, and Gates, Bensley, Brown, Brisky, Constantine, Davis, Edwards, Hurd, Hughley, Ramsey, Ramsey, Reese, Scott family, the McCauley, the Mc, the McLemore, Brooks, Whitlow, McKnight, Deacon George Williams, the Jackson family, the Flint or the Gibson, the Fisher, the Dozer, the Landry, the Powell, the Jackson, the Truett, the Wilson, the Barber, the Johnson, the Lee, McCann, Smith, Harris, Hicks, Hodges, Marshall, Woody family, the Hughley family. Would you bless these families right now? And this morning we bind sickness back to the gates of hell. Congested heart failure, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, heart disease. Would you just bind them in the gates of hell? We bind sickness as only you can. And God, when it's all over, you get the glory. You get the honor. You get the praise. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.
choir. The choir is showing out on today. Amen. God bless you, choir. Amen. Amen. Listen, the storm cloud came on Wednesday, so we were not able to have our youth remix, but we're going to have it this Wednesday. Amen. So share, share pass it along that this Wednesday we're bringing our young people back. This Wednesday, parents, we want you to be there as well. Amen. We have neglected them, but we ain't, we are not one to neglect them anymore. Amen. Amen. And listen, listen, for the first time ever, for the first time ever in the city of Lynette, we're going to have what is called National Day of Prayer. First time ever. First time. And it's all because Pastor Marty, Mark Marty, went to the mayor and asked the mayor, can the city come together and pray? This is the first time, first time ever, been doing it across the whole. But this time, we're bringing it to the city of Lynette, and I am a part of that executive committee. Amen. So, so I'm excited. I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to be pushing it. I'm going to be pushing it. And guess what? For the first time ever, the opening prayer is going to be done by Mayor Jamie Hurd. Amen. Amen. And then, because we ain't discriminating. Prayer by Sister Cynthia Barrows. We, we, we gonna do the doggone thing. Thursday, May 5th, noon at the W.O. Lance Park or recreation across from the W.O. Lance Elementary School, we want you to come. We are setting up, you know, just like homegoing celebration, bring your lawn chairs just in case we ain't got enough chairs. But we're going to do the doggone thing. We're going to pray over the city of Lynette for 45 minutes straight prayer, 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 prayer. Amen. So, so, so we, you, when you see those uh, yard signs talking about National Day of Prayer, just say, I got to be a part of that because my church is a part of that. Our mayor is a part of that. Our pastor is a part of that. Ain't nobody talking to me. When we come together and pray for the city of Lynette. Amen. And then I want to thank Sister Gloria Jones for, for, for doing the doggone thing. You got your palms, so y'all better get ready during this sermon. Y'all better get y'all palms out because we're going to wave them palms like we ain't never waved them before and we're going to cry out, Hosanna. Okay, 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 okay. You, you, you know, you know, I love it when members call me and say, hey, Pastor. No, I really don't understand why you want us to get them palms. I mean, you know, what you getting us getting these palms for? And then when they call me and tell me what they learned from somebody else, ain't nobody talking to me. And say, Pastor, you've been, you've been teaching us this these last five years, but we've been so hard headed that we don't want to accept teaching. <laughs> ain't nothing spooky about this palm. You're going to find in the sermon that when they saw Jesus riding on the ass, they start saying, Hosanna! Pray, since you're playing it, hey, for me.
the altar Please Don't forget To pray For me Father it's preaching time I'm your instrument So play me in any key that you see fit and plan me in. For some, we would see Jesus. None of me, but all of you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. John chapter 12, beginning at verse number 12. John chapter 12, beginning at verse number 12. As we're hitting that share button and standing for the word of God, John chapter 12, beginning at verse number 12. There you shall find these words. Coming from the thundering King James Version. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. Verse number 12 again. On the next day, much people, that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord and I just want to talk about ride on King Jesus ride on y'all going to pray with me my brothers and sisters here we have the writer by the name of John John pens in this 12th chapter about the feast of the Passover but before he could start this chapter good because anytime you start in the middle of a chapter you must go to the beginning of the chapter to get the whole context of the verse here in chapter number 12, they are mad and mad and mad because Jesus just raised Lazarus from the grave. I, I, I wish y'all would pray me. Right there in chapter number 11, Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus saying, Jesus, Lazarus is sick, whom the one whom you love is sick. And Jesus never came to see about Lazarus. But when he got there four days later, he said to Mary and Martha, this sickness is not unto death, but that the Father may get the glory. Even though Jesus had just told them that Lazarus' sickness is not unto death, but that the Father may get the glory, yet they still did not believe that Jesus could get him up. And that's why the Bible says, and Jesus will. Jesus did not weep because Lazarus was dead. He wept because their faith had left them. And so he said, since you don't have the power or the faith to believe that I'm able to raise up Lazarus, show me where you laid him. Could it be that God is saying to some of us, show me where you lost your faith. I wish y'all would talk to me. You, you, you worried about sickness? Take me to the hospital and I'll show you that I still got power to raise people up. You worried about fear? You worried about anxiety? Take me to the place where you lost it and I'll show you I still got the power. Jesus said, show me 
where you laid him. And notice what happened. He goes to the grave. Now, now Travis, just like you, I love the queen of soul. But Aretha got it wrong. Aretha said he went to the grave and called Lazarus three times. No, the God I serve only got to do is say it one time and it'll happen. The old preacher said it like this. The reason why he had to call Lazarus by his name, because if he would have said, get up, then everybody would have got up. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Obadiah, ain't nobody talking to me, would have got up. So he had to be pacific and say, Lazarus, come forth. Now hold on, because I love Jesus. Jesus would always use people who doubt you to do the work. Can, can, can I prove my, my, my point? Jesus told them to lose it. I'm going to call them, but you got to lose it. Can, can, can I tell you, the people that I love, while you praying for your children, while you praying for your spouse, loose them in the hands of Jesus and watch him work things out. You already called their name to him. Now loose them and let Jesus show you that he got power. That way he was, son, keep on calling his name, but put him in God's hand. That fast daughter, keep calling her name and put her in God's hand. That mean spouse, call their name and loose Let him go. Now, in the beginning of chapter number 12, they're mad because they knew Lazarus was dead. His fame had went all abroad that he, he healed Jairus' daughter. He raised Peter's mother-in-law that was sick with a fever. He healed the widow unnamed who were taking her son to the cemetery. And now he went to the cemetery and got Lazarus up. They're mad. And guess what? So now at the feast, they're mad. And the Bible says, on the next day, much people. Do y'all not see that? That would come to the feast. Hold on. I, I got to tell y'all this. Because uh, somebody told me I better not preach long today. So let me jump around a little bit. Uh, there were three people, three groups that were at this feast. So, so let me just, let me jump down and tell you the three people that were there. Y'all ready? There were three people that was there, Wendell. You had uh, the past, those who were visiting because it was the Passover. There's always some visitors in the camp. They don't understand what's going on. They just visit. And so right here, the first group were those that were visiting from outside of Judea, that's John 12 and 12, so, so we got some visitors that's there then we got the local people who witnessed the raising of Lazarus because they said hey if Jesus just raised Lazarus we're going to follow him wherever he goes and then here's that third group that we find almost every other Sunday in the church, are y'all ready? those religious leaders who were greatly concerned about Jesus, what Jesus might do at the feast so you got three types of group there. You got those who, that are visiting, just trying to get a word, just trying to get a meal. Then you got those who saw Jesus work. And then you got those religious leaders who mad about what Jesus going to do. Can I tell you, every time you come to church, we got those three type of people here that know that God will get a prayer through, that know that God will work. And then you got those spectators that's trying to figure out what's going to happen in the service. But I like those disciples that say, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Now, I like it when folks lead church and say, did not our hearts burn? those groups that's watching Jesus but I love it because somebody who knew who Jesus was said I read what he said in Zechariah 9 and 9 you daughters of Zion don't you trip because the Messiah is going to come riding on a donkey and see Jesus could have came like a king because he is the king. But he took the meek 
and the low. Uh, Y'all want to talk to me? Let me, let, me, let me work this text for a little while. Uh, uh, he brought the meek and the lowly to show us that he's fully God and fully man. Uh, John shows us that Jesus is unique as God's special son, yet he is fully God because he's fully God. Jesus is able to reveal God to us clearly and accurately. I done showed y'all who I was because you remember when they said to Jesus your mama and your daddy is looking for you. Jesus said who is my mother? Who is my father? But those who do the will of my father belongs to me. I'm uniquely God and I'm uniquely Jesus. I'm so unique that I, I got power that I put my, my divinity in subjection and said daddy hold on to it for the right time. Okay, y'all looking at me like y'all ain't never read the Bible. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse number 7, that here's a good Hebrew Greek word for you. It's called kenosis. Uh, kenosis, which simply means he self empty himself. Philippians 2 and 7 says, but he took on the form of man that he put his subject, he put his divinity into subjection. we simply see, daddy, I don't need it right now but you hold on it. Okay, y'all looking at me, talking about that, that's a big word for you. So Sister Alice, since I'm down here in Lynette, Alabama, let me tell you like the old preacher said, he took off his royal robe left it and hopped on a train came down through 42 generations born in a little town, little Bethlehem Judea he put it in subjection wrapped and swallowed the clothes played like little boys play huh? I, I hear something heaven thank you huh. let these kids If there's an anointing on their life, it's still going to be there when God gets ready. Stop trying to grow them up too fast. I got Bible to back me up. Hey, David was anointed at a young age. After his anointing, he still had to go back and do his chores as a little shepherd boy. And yet he still had to rate his time because the people wanted Saul when God had anointed David. Okay, y'all didn't like that one, so let me come down your street. The Bible says that at the age of 12, Jesus went into the synagogue and read the scripture that was prophesied by Isaiah. It said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has anointed me to deliver those who are bound. And the Bible says he closed up the book, gave it to one of the prophets. So we don't hear nothing else from the age of 12 until the age of 30. Okay, I, 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 I read the Bible, I, I read commentary, so let me tell you, from the age of 12 to age of 30, Jesus went to school. Jesus learned the trade of being a carpenter because his daddy was a carpenter. But at the right time, God gave him his divinity back. Okay, y'all ain't listen. I, I'm trying to tell you, let them be kids as long as they can be kids because at the right time, God is going to touch their heart. Give them the assignment that's on their life. And when God give them the assignment on their life, you can't stop the favor of God that's on somebody else's life. I said, so the scribes and the Pharisees thought that they could stop the favor of God on God. I got a question. How can you Stop God. Uh, uh, Fountain of Life Missionary Baptist Church down there in Detroit, uh, Michigan. Fountain of Life. Uh, Pastor Charles Wright pastors there now, but uh, Pastor uh, uh, Haywood Crawford used to pastor there. And Mother Crawford told me, she said, baby, if God before you, who can be against you? And, and I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you say if God before you, who can be against you? And somebody will holler back Negroes. But guess what? Negroes can't even be against you. Because if God before you, he going to use those same people that's against you to elevate you. I'm trying to, trying to tell somebody that if God is for you, it don't matter what they try to set against you. God will make things turn out for your good. And we know that all things work together for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. Ah, 
why you meant it for evil but God turned that thing around for my good see the Bible says no weapon formed against me shall prosper no word that proceeds out your mouth shall come to fruition hold on the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life so you mean to tell me you think you are man or woman enough to stop what God has for me They thought, because they got their little clique. I'm just dealing with the three type of crowds that was there. They thought because they were the priestly leaders that they've been here before you. That they can stop what God has for you. Look, 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 look at them, look at them. Because it's, it's not the, the followers. It's the scribes and the Pharisees. You know, the scribes thought that they just knew the law and the scripture. Pharisees thought they, oh, we're so pious because, no. Jesus made those who've been there before him look stupid. And can I tell you, I, I got a rhema word for somebody. You may be new on your job, but guess what? Elevation is coming. Why? why? Because God got favor on you. I'm still, I'm still in the text. Look, all four gospel writers deal with what we call Palm Sunday. They all deal with that. Uh, Matthew says that Jesus told them to go over to the next city and you will find a young coat tied up. And when the Lord of that coat asks you, tell him that the Lord has need of it and he will give it to you. Now, notice this. Jesus is about to do something that I didn't realize until I began to study. Uh, a donkey is the most stubbornest animal. That's why y'all gave him the name Jack. They're the most stubbornest until you train them. But hold on. This donkey has never been trained. y'all would learn how to read the Bible. He says, go get me a donk, donkey or coat never a man set upon. I wish y'all learned how to read the Bible. So that means that nobody has ever ridden this donkey. Nobody has ever rolled it because another translation says that the coat was tied to his mother. I wish I would read the Bible. But Jesus says, bring me the coat that never man has written. And look, he shows them that he's so powerful that he gets on a donkey without being trained. And how does the donkey know where to go if it's never been trained? Because God can use anybody in anything. I got Bible, 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 because y'all y'all still looking at me. I, I got Bible. Y'all remember in, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, uh, that he was riding a donkey, and the donkey stopped, and the donkey began to talk to the man and said, why you keep beating on me? Haven't I been good to you? Haven't I taken you where you want to go? Why you keep beating on me? And he kept on kicking that donkey. The donkey said, if you knew what I see, you wouldn't be kicking on me. You would be thanking me. And the Bible says that there were men, the angels with swords ready to take his head off, but God can use anything and anybody. Ah, I wish y'all would talk to me in here for a little while. Because Jesus is God's son, we can perfectly trust what he said by trusting him, we can gain an open mind to understand God's message and fulfill his purpose in our lives. We got to fully trust him to understand why we're going through what we're going through. Can I deal with the text for a little while? Sometimes what you're going through is not for you, it's for somebody else. 
I wish y'all would learn how to talk to me. Sometimes you don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's looking at you. So you can never give up. I know you going through some stuff, but can you just have a Job spirit and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Can you have a Job spirit and say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you have a Job spirit to say, bless naked I came in the world and naked I will leave it. Can you have a Job spirit? Say, God, I, I don't understand, but guess what? Since you got me going through, I can handle it. So John shifts the scene from a quiet dinner in Bethany to a noisy public parade in Jerusalem. This was the only public demonstration that our Lord allowed while he was ministering on earth. Because you do remember every time Jesus did a miracle, he said, don't you tell nobody. And he did off the scene. But this is the only noisy one that he allowed because the prophecy had to be fulfilled. Can I tell you that, guess what? There is prophecy over your life. Okay, uh-uh. Uh, over my life, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Hey, 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 church, can I tell you something? You ain't got no dealing with the alpha and the omega of your life. You ain't, okay, y'all looked at me. I thought, I thought at least those of y'all who were Greek would, would caught that one, or you travelers would have caught that one. You ain't got no dealings with the beginning and the end of your life. The only thing you can try to handle is that little hyphen in the middle. But look what Jeremiah 29 11 says. For I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. I, I, I'm waiting on y'all to catch up. So you ain't got no dealing with it. It's already been prophesied over your life what you got to go through. But here's the key thing. Just go through it. Okay, y'all looking at me in that tone. So, so, um, because Wendell got me lost a few times. I don't trust the bus's GPS. I have my phone and the bus GPS. So Friday night, Wendell want to tell me how to get somewhere. I don't trust Wendell nor the GPS. Because Wendell has taken me some places Many of places that we had to back down, we had to back 12 big charter buses backwards. Because Wendell took us some places. So I don't trust the GPS. But here it is. So we got together. Dob, Wendell, myself, and we brought out Google Earth to see where we needed to go. Now, Wendell said, go this way, this way, and there's a turn somewhere. I don't know the name of the street. So, thank God for Google Earth. We're able to zoom in to our location and see the names of each street where we need to go on. So, as we're driving, the street comes out of nowhere because it's dark. I stop got to make this crazy turn. But guess what? If it had not been for my crazy turn, Dobbs or Wendell wouldn't know how to turn. Y'all missing that. That's why you going through some of the stuff you're going through so you can tell somebody else, I've been through that. You don't want to do it. And if they see you make a crazy turn, then they'll know how to move, how to maneuver. Can I tell you, keep on coming to church. Let them say what they want to say about you. Let them say what they want to say about what's going on. Keep on coming because you'll learn how to. several feasts going on at each of the different feasts the people were in keen expectation 
wondering if Jesus would be there and what he would do. Can I tell you that's how you ought to come to church every Sunday? With keen expectation. What is Jesus going to do today? Okay, hold on, hold on. Because y'all don't know in the shop. I said you ought to come to church every Sunday with keen expectation. What is Jesus going to do today? Hold on. I ain't said what the choir was going to do. I ain't said what the preacher was going to do. But you ought to come to church week after week with keen expectation. What is Jesus going to do today? Hold on because y'all still sitting on your blessed assurance. I thought you would have caught it by now. You ought to come with keen expectation wondering what Jesus is going to do today because Jesus I done prayed to you on Monday so I'm still expecting you. I done prayed to you on Tuesday so I'm still waiting. I prayed on Wednesday, prayed on Thursday, prayed on Friday, prayed on Saturday. What are you going to do? They, they said, they said, they said, they, they, they came. They didn't come for the right reason. They just want to know what he's going to do. But thank God that I ain't in that crowd. I'm in the crowd that know that whenever he shows up, something gonna happen. I heard you, when he shows up, something gonna show up. Okay, because y'all are looking at me. Come here, Moses. Moses, when you got to the Red Sea, you had Pharaoh behind you, mountains on both sides. He told you to stretch out your eye. He showed up, and then it showed out. And then he told you, Moses, turn around and use that same rod and close it up when he shows up. He got a way of showing out. Come here, Joshua, because Joshua, you lead the people around the walls of Jericho seven days, but on the seventh day, on the seventh time, sound your trumpet. When he shows up, he got a way of showing out. Come here. They came expecting to see what he's going to do. But I love that cry that knew the prophecy of the scripture that began to cut down palm trees. The Bible says that they had a canopy where he came up under, had palms on the ground, and they began to cry, Hosanna, Hosanna, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Let me try to do old school and then y'all come catch me. He said, Hosanna, Hosanna, which simply means save us right now. But there's something about that crowd who cried out, Hosanna. You got to be careful of everyone who calls your name. Because Jesus found out that you called out Hosanna, Hosanna on Sunday. But on Monday, Thursday, you cried out crucify. You got to be careful of those who start out on your team because... Uh, they'll turn around and stab you in the back. Have I got a witness? Uh, you got to be careful of those who's always trying to lift you up uh, because they're trying to kick the school from up under you. Uh, but I heard the Bible says, uh, whom the Lord exalts nobody can bring down and whom the Lord bring down nobody can bring up so you got to be careful my brothers and sisters of those who's crying out Hosanna can I tell you those three crowns are here today but please don't be a part of those religious leaders crowd please 
Jesus, uh, don't be a part uh, of that crown uh, because that crown uh, will cry out, uh, crucify. Uh, you got to be careful uh, who you're sitting next to uh, because all uh, three crowns are here. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that I'm a part uh, of the crown uh, that said, please uh, save me now. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, that need the Lord uh, to save you uh, right now. Uh, I got sickness uh, and I need you uh, to save me. Uh, I got trouble in my home uh, and I need you uh, to save me. Uh, I got trouble on my job uh, and I need you uh, to save me. Uh, can I get ready uh, to take y'all uh, to Monday, Thursday? Uh, they crying out, uh, Hosea. Hosanna, Hosanna, but messed around on Monday, Thursday and said, Jesus got to die. You got to be careful because there are some folks that want to slit your throat. There are some folks that want to stab you in the back, but you got to learn how to be like Jesus. And don't you say a mumbling word. Let's go to Monday, Thursday. Can't you see Jesus has already did the Passover. Jesus had already did the Last Supper. Jesus had told them that one of y'all would betray me and all of them said Lord is it I and Jesus said it's the one that's dipping with me can I tell y'all everybody who try to get close to you ain't getting close for the right reason they'll be the same ones that try to set you up They'll be the same ones and be like Judas taking 30 pieces of silver just to set you up. And I love what Jesus said. Whatever you do, do it quickly. And the Bible says that Judas went and gave back the money. They said, no, we don't want that bloodshed money. The Bible said Judas Judas went and hung himself and the Bible says they took that money and bought a cemetery and put Judas body in that cemetery you got to be careful who you betray it's some of y'all under the sound of my voice that's spiritually dead because you put your mouth on the wrong person there's some of y'all in the virtual mount uh, that's spiritually dead uh, cause you touch uh, God's anointed one uh, now hold up uh, cause I know y'all uh, I ain't talking about me uh, everybody uh, who got a calling uh, on their life uh, is God's uh, anointed one uh, everybody uh, that's singing uh, God's praise uh, is God's uh, anointed one uh, so don't you think I'm talking about me some of y'all smiling in people face while you're talking behind their back backstabbers and you wonder why God ain't hearing your prayer you got to learn how to repent you got to learn how to turn see the old church used to talk about repentance but the new church don't want to talk about repentance can I tell you you uh, if you don't repent uh, you're going to hell uh, if you don't live right uh, you're going to hell uh, you're gossiping about people uh, you're going to hell and guess what uh, you can go to hell uh, because in hell uh, you will lift up your eyes uh, the bible says uh, it's the place uh, called Shiloh uh, see now uh, Shiloh means uh, the place uh, of the dead uh, well if you don't go uh, to Shiloh you might end up in Gehenna and Gehenna is the place of the unknown well if you don't go to Shiloh if you don't go to Gehenna then you will go to Haiti 
Hades is the place where the fire keep on burning. And I don't know about y'all. I don't want to go to Shiloh. I don't want to go to Gehenna. I don't want to go to Hades. But I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Why you want to go to heaven? Because they tell me the streets I pay with gold. They tell me that there's a tree good for the healing. They tell me there's a crystal fountain. They tell me that there's 12 gates to the city. Three gates in the north. Three gates in the south. Three gates in in the east, three gates in the west. I'm going to where Jesus is. Anybody here ready to go to Calvary? Anybody here? I said, Y'all, you ready to go to Calvary? Well, y'all know what happened on that Friday. They marched him up, got Gothas Hill. They led him between Isthmus and Dismas. And I heard, I said, I heard him say father forgive them for they know not what they do and I heard him say daddy it's finished he gave up gave up the ghost anybody here no he died he died he died till the moon went down in blood he died till the sun refused to shine he died till the earth began to reel and rock he died that the surety soldier said surely this must be this got to be the son of man but I'm so glad that ain't the end of the story early 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 Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands can y'all help me ride on King Jesus ride on King Jesus no man no man cannot hinder me so I wave my palm saying Hosanna Hosanna save me now that's the only way you gonna get to heaven is that you gotta call that name Hosanna save us now Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me that's love they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his head for you and me he died that's love but that's not how the story ends and three days later Jesus to Calvary save a wretch like you and me
says no greater love than this than a man would lay down his life for a friend and Jesus died for you and me and so since he died for me I ought to live for him come on the doors of the church is open